Good afternoon, J First Baptist Church. We're so happy you're here with us today. Um, I just want to start this presentation today uh, with just a couple of items. Uh, one is uh, yesterday we had some I, I issues with some individuals that I don't think they've had this quite the, the same um, as as other Sunday verb or a lot of what what people would call echoing over the live Facebook. Um, some people said they almost couldn't understand some of the of the speaking and and the service. I know even some here at the church said there seemed to be some echoing. We do have some echo in the gym. That's yesterday was extremely difficult with uh, over the Facebook, and it wasn't our equipment. We used the. Uh, we are working on getting some extra different equipment that will help alleviate some of this. I've been looking uh, actually to today. I was looking at some DIY projects to possibly put some sound panelings um, up in the gym. They're they they can be made for relatively very inexpensive costs, and they have some nice looks to them, and they go up very very easily, and they're they're not heavy, but they're much cheaper than the expensive ones you would actually purchase at at uh, through a sound place that does sound equipment that are professional sound padding and they do just as good of job with that and just as good of work with it so we're going to try immediately so we can maybe deaden some of the echoing but this one piece of equipment we hope hopefully lord willing we'll be using next week might alleviate some of that also and give us even a better pickup with with everything over the facebook live i do know doug um Doug Mesta has worked on uh, taking lot yesterday's service and putting it on the YouTube, and it is understandable. I think some of this has to do with the with with the item you're using to listen to it on, and other things. Uh, and and another thing was Facebook Live yesterday for some reason just was giving us a little bit of uh, problems and that. And I don't think we were the only ones. But it, um, I did talk to some people, and we're going to try to alleviate that. And I'm very sorry for that if there was problems. But if you were not able to get the service, try looking it up on YouTube, or it has been placed back on the Facebook page. And, and Brother Doug has worked on that. You, it, it might be much better. I pray that today is a restful day for, for many of you. We are looking forward to just a, I, I am. I'm over here shortly, and I'm going to be not doing too, too much to today and kind of resting up. And uh, I know today we remember all those that gave the ultimate sacrifice to, to give us freedom here in our country. Well, I just want to lift something, lift just a verse up to you from the book of Daniel for this afternoon, for this Memorial Day. You know, things don't always go as we hoped they would. Things aren't always perfect. Things don't always work right. And sometimes we, it, it, it seems like everything we try and strive to, to do, we strive to, we strive to do the very best we can. It seems like the problems around us just interrupt and causes issues. Well, let me just encourage you. Uh, I take you to a story in the book of Daniel. I'm going to take you to one verse in particular, or two verses that gives us great encouragement. This was the story of Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are standing out in this great meeting area out in front of Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar had this great idea in his mind. He thought he would make this huge statue. And that on the, on the call to, to bowing down to it, everyone in the kingdom would bow down to the statue. And... We know that the story says that the statue was made, was put out in the midst of the people. Everyone was called. And these three friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they all were, were leaders in, in the country of, of Babylon at that time. They all served King Nebuchadnezzar. He knew them. They were the wise men. The, the advice, they were out there and they called to everybody to bow down. And those three did not bow down. And they were called up before Nebuchadnezzar, and he was he was furious. Why don't you bow down? And they said, "We will not worship this." And they and they, we know in in chapter three of Daniel, 
that they go into their explanation that we follow one God, as we do today, the same God, the, the true God. And they said, we, are, we cannot bow down. And Nebuchadnezzar said, if you do not bow down, you're going to be thrown in a fiery furnace. Well, they said this, and their response was this, a very interesting response. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And this is verse 17. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Now they were not saying this in a cocky manner. They were just explaining. They followed the true God, just as we do today. We follow the, the true God. And even if the world around us is on fire, we follow the true God. And we need to remember that. And that's so important. But then verse 18, they said, but if not, meaning if God does not save them from the fiery furnace, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Even if it wouldn't, if, if all of a sudden there was no miracle and they were killed in the fiery furnace, that even then, they still will stand, that they will not bow down to a false god. And fellow Christian, I just want to encourage you. Sometimes in life, it may seem like we're getting the short stick of that we're getting the short end of the stick. Sometimes it, it we get problems. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's financial. And right now, we live in a country and in a world that is very, very under, very much under pressure. This pandemic virus, and and now even I really believe that it's becoming politi a political tool, not just in our country but in many countries. There is the, there is unrest. There are problems with this. I understand that. I I, I can't tell you I'm 100% no no worry or or not ever been depressed during this time. It is depressing where you can't do the things you enjoy doing. And I've talked to others. And and I've, I've had these, what they call Zoom meetings with other pastors around the state of Florida with the Florida Baptist Convention. There are many that are struggling and in some churches, they've been devastated. We've been very fortunate in the J area. We've had what, two cases, really one, because one person didn't. And then, then there was this other one and I believe he recovered. So we've not experienced what some areas are experiencing where there's deaths. God has been very, very, he's given us a great blessing in that. And, and my prayer is that if he can still do that and, and, and in all areas that this pandemic goes away and that the doctors do find a cure and, a, and, an, and, an, and an inoculation so that we can be protected and that our financial status in this country and the economy does get back up on his feet and things we enjoy doing the travel and other things it will come back to how it once was it may not but even under all this stress we need to, to remember we serve one God he's in the glories of heaven and he loves us so much remember he came for your sins and for my sins he gave it all so that we could have that relationship back with God and I just want to encourage you today as we, some of us are going to be cooking out. I know we're, we're getting together with families in this. And um, I would ask you to, to pray for my wife. She is down in the Orlando area with her parents. My, my father-in-law and my, my mother-in-law has just come out of the hospital. She has pneumonia. She doesn't have the COVID-19, but she's been struggling greatly. Her name is Marion. My father-in-law is Gary. If you could re remember them in prayer, because I know both are struggling in, in different ways. Um, the Lord has protected them from the COVID virus. And I, I can't know, I, I can't say how much I, I thank the Lord for that. My dad has also been protected. He's been under lockdown uh, for, for a number of months now. And he lives just uh, outside of the Orlando area. His name is George. I'm a junior and um, he's doing all right. Uh, he's had some bad sinus problems, not the COVID-19, but, but he's had to take some heavy duty antibiotics and he's still recouping from that. But my wife's down ministering to her parents and she's been there a number of weeks now since Mother's Day. 
and she may be there a little bit longer. And, and her name is Kara Lee. If you could just remember them in your prayer time. I know some I'm seeing the, the, the names here and I see Art for, for a number of years and I'm glad you're watching and, uh, and may God bless you. What, what, a what a lovely lady. Um, and, and I see some others that, that, that are watching too. And, um, uh, I just am, am so thankful for being able to use this technology to share a little bit of encouragement, I pray. But remember, when the tough situation, oh, it was tough. When they were in this tough situation, they, they still refused to bow down to the false gods of this world, that they stuck with God. And by the way, if you don't remember this story, the story ended this way that King Nebuchadnezzar cooked up that furnace seven times more than it ever was. In fact, the guards that threw these three men into the furnace were killed because of the heat. But he looked into the fiery furnace, he saw four people, men, the three young men, and he saw one who looked like God. That was Jesus. I believe this pre-incarnate Christ was with them. So God did protect them. And you never know how God will protect us and keep us during these hard times. But always remember that God is in control. He was never taken by surprise and he loves you dearly. And, and my prayers are with you. Let me close this in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We do thank you for all that you've done. We're able to connect with each other over the airwaves and this broadcasting over the Facebook Live. And may you just bless and keep each and every one that watches those in our communities, those in our churches. And Lord, allow us to have the open doors to reach out to our community for your name's sake and for salvation. We ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. God bless and shalom.